Phones blaring our podcast. Nothing is sweeter than Swiftcast. Hey, everybody. Hey, guys. Hi. And welcome to episode 47 of Swiftcast. This is Nate. Ashley. And Steph. So we have a lot of cool things to talk about this week. Uh, most importantly, the ACMs. Uh, those aired last night. And some pretty cool stuff happened in that show. It was a good show overall. Um, but, you know, we'll get to that a little more, a little later in the episode here. So, But something really, really, really important happened today. Yes, very. Ed Sheeran's new single came out. Woohoo. And it sounds awesome. And it's very, very long overdue. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, so what did you guys think of it? Um, well, the title of the song is called Sing, um, if you guys didn't know. Um, and I thought it was, I thought it was great. I mean, it, it kind of combines like the classic, you know, Ed Sheeran talent with, um, like a, almost like a new poppy kind of, I don't know, it's difficult to describe, I guess, but it, it was good. It was great. I really liked it. His music in general is very difficult to describe. It really is. Yeah. It's really, you know, it's kind of, of like kind. you just have to experience it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I first heard the preview of the acoustic version, I was really excited. And then when I heard the new song, the the produced actual song single today, at first I was kind of like, oh, wow, this this sounds like Justin Timberlake to me. It didn't (laughs) sound at all like Ed. You know, he hit some high notes in there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, is this what the whole album is going to be like? I feel like Ed's like so unique. He shouldn't. Maybe he's going too far off course here. But I think, you know, this is a great first single. It's sonically different, but not too drastically different. And it's so catchy and has such a great hook. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be huge for him. And after I've listened to it, it was just stuck in my head all day. And I've since listened to it probably like 30 times. And so now I do love it a lot. I still think I liked the acoustic preview a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Because how can you be at acoustic, you know? Yeah, that's true. (laughs) <laughs> but I think it'll be a huge hit for him. And I think with the the rest of his album, we'll probably see more of the classic Ed and maybe not so much of the Justin Timberlake sound. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure we will. Yeah. I mean, Ed, I mean, he's always very unique in, in everything, in, all the, in every approach that he does. So, so yeah, I'm sure it's going to be an awesome album when it finally drops. And Taylor tweeted that she was already listening to it, jamming out in her car. <laughs> I was waiting for her tweet about it all day. Mm-hmm. And you know, if Taylor likes the music, it's it's probably pretty awesome. There's a line in the song that when I, cause I looked up and read the lyrics because I don't know if I'm the only one, but I feel like it's very difficult to understand what he's saying in his song sometimes. <laughs> so I went and looked up the lyrics and there's a line in the song that when I read it, I just thought like this has to be about Taylor. And the line is, he says, this love is a blaze. I saw flames from the side of the stage. Hmm. Hmm. First of all, blaze reminds me of burning red, but also the side of the stage. Like, obviously, that's of where course, he was yeah. when Taylor's performing. And that's where mm-hmm. Taylor probably was when he was performing. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be really interesting to see what kind of songs appear that could possibly be about Taylor. I would love if on this album, and I'm sure he wouldn't do this, but if he like started doing hidden messages. <laughs> I don't know. He seems so very clear, though, in recent interviews that he, they are not dating. He talked about a song called Don't that is about some other singer who cheated on him. And he made clear that's not about Taylor, <laughs> which is interesting because it's like, okay, who's, this, who's it about? But yeah, that's a the side of the stage. Who else could it really be about? Unless maybe it's like Ellie Goulding or something. That was my other guess, yeah. Well, and then like a little while after that verse, he says something about, she handed me a bottle of water filled with tequila. And I was like, well, that's not Taylor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably not Taylor. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see whether he has songs that could be about Taylor in June and then in October, whether Taylor has anything that could be about him. So before we get to the mini segments, I want to just give out a quick shout out to one of our listeners. It's a funny story. My husband, actually, one of his coworkers is a listener of SwiftCast. I had never actually met him before, but we went to his wedding this weekend. So I finally got to meet one of our listeners and the wedding was beautiful. And there were two Taylor songs at the reception. 
That was going to be my question. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah, he played Love Story and Today Was a Fairy Tale, and I fangirled, and it was so exciting. <laughs> so just wanted to give a quick congratulations to Brandon and Michelle. That is very cool. Thanks for listening. All right, so now uh, we're going to move over to our mini segments. And our first one comes from at like I'm 22. Their Swifty bucket list is to go to the Love Story Castle. Well, I wanted to give some info about that for anybody who might not know, because I actually looked it up recently during one of my trips to Nashville. So it's called Castle Gwen. It's spelled G-W-Y-N-N. And it's only open during the Renaissance Festival, which is in the month of May. Hmm. So coming up, about a month. So if you want to go, that's the time. It's on my bucket list, too. I've been wanting to go, yeah, for a couple of years now. Our next one is from Swifty Always, who says, was waiting for the green light, and now I have the took off faster than a green light go part of Holy Ground in my head. Swifty problems. I have that same problem whenever I see green lights. I do that too, except I'm more like, uh, I'm more like from Story of Us when she yells go, and I'm just like, <laughs> and I just like take off. <laughs> Our next one is from at Tay is fab than you, and she said, it's impossible not to change your icon or header when you see a new picture of Taylor. Swifty problems. Yeah, and the biggest problem is if you change one, then you usually have to change the other. Well, I'm never changing my icon from the picture of me and her, so I don't have this problem. Huh. Sorry, that was really modest. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people have that problem on, on Twitter. Every time a new picture of Taylor comes out, I think everybody changes it to that one. My whole entire camera roll is, like, random pictures of Taylor. Me too. Yeah, I feel wrong for deleting them. All right, so our next one comes from at Putindini, and their Swifty bucket list is to meet Taylor, hug Taylor, take a great selfie with Taylor, ask for Taylor's autograph, and sing with Taylor. If only we could all do all those things. She was taking a lot of selfies with fans at the ACMs last night. Yeah, she was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are all kinds of pictures. Our next one is from at Sparkly Haunted, and I can relate to this very well. They said, choosing between Wonderstruck, Wonderstruck Enchanted, and Taylor to wear as perfume, Swifty Problems. Very true. Except I would replace Wonderstruck Enchanted with Starlight, because I like Starlight better. I still don't have that one. It's on my bucket list of merchandise to buy. Uh, our next one is from at Wrote You a Song, saying, this is my favorite Taylor Swift song. To every Taylor song there is, Swifty problems. And I can completely relate to this because I often put her songs on shuffle on my iPhone. And for every song, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the best song ever. <laughs> and then the next one comes on and I'm like, no, wait, this is the best song ever. And it's just impossible. <laughs> but a great problem to have. Our next one comes from at all Too Swifty X, And they say... I wish I left school in 2013 so I could get a jumper with a 13 on the back. Swifty problems. That would be awesome. Well, the next best thing to that would be you could get the Red Tour jersey. That has a 13 on the back. Ah, yeah, there you go. Although, since you use the word jumper, you're probably in the UK and you don't have the jersey in your online store, so I'm sorry. Bummer. <laughs> eBay. Yeah, <laughs> eBay. eBay will be your friend. I sold my extra Red Tour jersey to a fan in Australia. Oh, cool. All right, so now we're going to move into our main discussion. And this week, obviously, uh, we're going to be talking all about uh, the ACMs. So um, as you guys know, the ACMs, uh, they were on Sunday night. And yeah, overall, it was a, it was a fun award show to watch. Um, unfortunately, Taylor didn't win as much as at least I thought she would. But, but overall, it was pretty good. I mean, um, what do you guys think? Any, any first, first thoughts on it? Well, first of all, I would call it less of an award show than a concert with a few awards scattered in. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, and so many awards were given off camera. Mm -hmm. That's true. I'd really like to get a guy's perspective on Taylor's outfit. What'd you think, Nate? I thought it was awesome. I think that's like instant top three of the outfits that she's worn, in my opinion. So... I mean, yeah, it was awesome. What are your other two? Um, let me think. My other two, uh, I really liked, um, uh, let's see, I think it was PCA. Um, the white 20, dress? Yeah, the white dress. 2013. 12? That was 13? Okay, 13. Um, 
and oh man, the third one. Whew. That's kind of tough. There's so many. Like <laughs> maybe like one of her Grammy outfits, maybe. Maybe the all too well Grammy outfit. I really like that. You forgot the striped top thing. Oh, the striped top thing, of course, at Nashville. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. I thought you would go with her outfit during her performance of Red at the CMT Music Awards in 2013. Oh, that one was really cool. That was a cool outfit. Yeah. Why do I barely remember that outfit? And I was actually there. That was the one with like the, the red uh, like coattails, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember now. And it, mm. it had some black in it, too. Yeah, that was that was very cool. I like that one. Those are good choices. Yeah, I thought this outfit was amazing. Nobody else could pull it off. And when I initially saw the kind of fuzzy pictures of it, I was like, what is going on? What is she wearing right now? That That's exactly what I thought. I was like, that's not her red carpet picture. I was like, what is she wearing? It was confusing. But then when the HQ photos started appearing, I was like, oh my goodness. Wow. Mm-hmm. She looks incredible. I think her, her new hairstyle really like complimented it. Yeah, I was so excited to see what it would be like to, with her having her short hair on the red carpet for the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think pretty much every magazine I've seen today has named her as the best dressed or at least one of the best dressed. So I think it worked out well. I feel like if this is at all a sign of her like new era... We're going to see a lot more bold style choices. Like during the red era, it was controversial and bold that she was wearing shorts. But Mm -hmm. I feel like it's about to go a little further than that. Yeah. Not in like a bad or like not classy way, of course. But like, I feel like, you know, she. Well, she's getting older. She's getting older. She's changing. Yeah. She went away from like, you know, she could have worn a million different types of dresses, but she decided to go with this crop top and skirt and. Mm hmm. It was just a really bold choice. Yeah, I think we'll see a lot more bold outfit choices with this new era. And I think we we did see a little bit of that with the red era, era, like with one of Nate's favorite outfits at the People's Choice Award. Right, yeah. I mean, that was one of the reasons I liked it so much. It was so different than what she normally wear, I guess. Yeah, uh, I think we'll see more of that. But I think we've also noticed her style has been really classic and kind of new york like yeah that's true definitely all right so as far as like uh the awards taylor won last night um she actually won uh only one out of her five nominations unfortunately uh, but she did win um the one that she did take home was video of the year for highway don't care so uh congrats to her both her and um and tim and keith i mean that, that really was an awesome song and they did an awesome job uh, on both the song and um, on the video itself, so um, so well deserved. Um, as for the other ones, she was nominated for um, Female Vocalist of the Year. Congrats to Miranda Lambert for winning that one. Um, also, Single of the Year for How We Don't Care. Um, again, Miranda Lambert for winning um, with Mama's Broken Heart. Um, vocal Event of the Year for How We Don't Care. Um, congrats to uh, both Keith and Miranda uh, for winning with We Were Us. And uh, finally, Entertainer of the Year. Um, congrats to uh, George Strait actually for winning. So, although Taylor didn't win, I was I was kind of happy about George Strait winning, winning Entertainer there. So, uh, yeah, I was really excited for George. I have been a, a pretty big country music fan for a long time, and I think George is awesome. You know, this is his last tour. He's really done so much for country music, and we can't forget that George really helped Taylor get a start. In her career, he was one of the first people to let her open for him. And, um, you know, he he helped her really get out to such a broader audience and get even more fans. So that's really cool. And she was so happy for him. Yeah, definitely. It's always nice when uh, someone who's who was helping out Taylor uh, won the award, I guess. So we first started helping out Taylor, I guess. I feel like at this point in George Strait's career... He doesn't even have to really do anything else to prove that he deserves Entertainer of the Year. That's true. (laughs) Yeah, and I think some fans may have been frustrated because they feel that Taylor definitely won the fan-voted portion. Um, But the rules of the ACM say that the Academy also has a vote in this. And yeah, I agree. Taylor probably did win the fan-voted portion. But George Strait is a huge artist, and he sells out his shows 
instantly. Like I, I've been trying to get tickets to shows around me and it's pretty much impossible. He's the king of country. And so I was really happy for him. I think this just wasn't Taylor's year, but next year probably will be um, a better year for her. So what'd you guys think of uh, some of the other performances of the night? Honestly, like the only one that sticks out in my mind, well, there's two. One was the band Perry with Chainsaw opening the show. It was really awesome. They had great energy. It was a great show opener and the confetti then seeing everyone get covered with confetti was really hilarious. (laughs) Right at the beginning. Did you tweet that you know who wrote that song? Yeah, um, the band Old Dominion, who I am friends with and I go to a lot of their shows, two of the members of that band, Matt Ramsey and Trevor Rosen, wrote the song Chainsaw. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, so, so exciting for them. It's a great song, too. They've written a lot of others. Um, I'm trying to think, and I can't think of any off the top of my head right now, but they have another one on the Band Perry's album. Um, they have, they've written for Dirk Bentley, Jake Owen, like they're great and they're just starting to get radio play of their own. So yeah, they're, I think seeing that, even though obviously they weren't performing their song that they wrote opening up an award show was just a great moment for them. But other than that, the only other one that really stuck out to me was, um, Keith Urban's performance of even the stars fall for you but I'm a little bit biased because I just love him so much. Yeah, I love Keith. He's such a great performer. I just feel like he gets snubbed at every single award show. He does. I feel like recently the male dominating force has been Luke and Blake, which they're both great, but I do feel like Keith gets overlooked a lot. I feel like Blake and Miranda both get tons of awards for no real apparent reason. Uh, yeah, I'll admit, like, in the last couple of years, I feel like a lot of award shows have been kind of like the Blake and Miranda fanfare show. Yeah. They win male and female vocalists all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but so this year, Blake actually lost to Jason Aldean for male vocalist, which was really surprising to me, because um, I just don't feel that Jason has done that much. I'm actually going to see him this summer with Miranda and oh, cool. Florida Georgia Line um, and I'm actually not really a huge fan of Jason at all. I just kind of want to go for something to do. To do. Are they all touring together? Uh, yeah, they're all doing a big show. Um, like I said, Florida Georgia Line, Miranda Lambert, Jason Aldean, Tyler Farr. So it's a lot of people. Wow. Yeah, really. Jeez. How did I hear about this? <laughs> Speaking of Florida Georgia Line, it was kind of cool that Taylor got to present the award to people on her label. Yeah, you have to admit, Big Machine really tore up last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Florida Georgia Line, the Bam Perry, uh, Justin Moore won. Yep. So that was really cool. And I did like their performance with Luke of This Is How We Roll. But for me, I would say my favorite was Eric Church, Give Me Back My Hometown. And I also love Dirk Bentley's new song. But I'm not really a big fan of Sheryl Crow, so I kind of wish it would have just been Dirks. Uh, but I feel that Dirks and Eric are both underrated as performers, and I just feel like they're not really recognized enough. I liked when Brad Paisley played at the pool party. <laughs> oh, that was cool, yeah. Uh, Riverbank was his new single. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Maybe he'll actually incorporate that into his tour, where people will be swimming He'll just have a big pool in the middle of the arena. <laughs> if anybody could pull it off, it would be Brad Paisley. That would win him entertainer, probably. Like, <laughs> he get to swim, to swim around. and. <laughs> I just wonder, like, were those people specially picked for the audience, or were they just swimming, and he came up and was like, hey, I'm going to perform now? <laughs> <laughs> Brad seems so laid back, I wouldn't be surprised if he was just like, oh, I am performing. <laughs> but you would think they would want for safety concerns, I guess. Yeah. He is really laid back, though. That's definitely true. How about you guys? I did like um, Hunter Hayes' performance. Um, He sang, uh, well, he sang it once at the Grammys, and then uh, this time around, I thought it was, I thought it was a lot better. So, uh, he sang Invisible, right? And that's what it's called? Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah. 
I'm a pretty big fan of his, but mm -hmm. people will probably disagree with me. I just haven't gotten into that song. No, fair like, enough. Like, I, I really appreciate the message, and I know he's doing the whole campaign to raise money for hunger and whatever else, mm -hmm. so that's great. But I don't know. Like, I just, I don't, I guess I'm just used to his songs being a little catchier. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, speaking of Hunter, I don't know if you guys have heard about the really crazy thing that he's doing next month. He's doing 10 shows in 24 hours to raise money for, um, to end child hunger. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. Seriously. He's going to 10 different cities, so he's actually going to be on the road during this 24-hour period. Yeah, he's going to start off at Good Morning America and then basically just go all over the East Coast over the course of the day. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I wish he was coming closer to me so I could see it. I actually know somebody who's going, or maybe I should say attempting, to go to nine of the ten shows. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's dedication. Yeah. I mean, literally just following the tour bus. This girl has seen him almost a hundred times, so she's very dedicated. But wow. I was just wow. thinking about, like, can you imagine if Taylor did ten? We would all just die. <laughs> like it wouldn't even be possible like we would all attempt to go to all of them and it just wouldn't be possible like people would get hurt trampled dehydrated <laughs> like we would just die it, it would be bad <laughs> now i gotta ask if she's only going to nine of the ten why isn't she just why isn't she doing the <laughs> full ten out of ten? ten i think one of them like the distance between the cities just like wasn't possible driving oh fair enough because i'm pretty sure hunter is flying to all of them Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, she's pretty hardcore. Well, that's cool he's doing that, though. Yeah, I'm really excited to like see coverage from it, and he has a new album coming out around then, so it should be really great. So here's a question about the ACMs. Why why didn't Taylor perform? It's the question of the week. Yeah. I guess maybe since, uh, you know, Red's really kind of winding down and you know, all too well was the Grammy choice, and I guess, uh, I guess, what else does she have left to perform? I guess, you know. Yeah, she's literally performed every song off Red that is like worthy of an award show performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and really, when you think about it, Red was her last single that was released to the country music format, and she performed that at the CMT Music Awards last June. And the CMAs. Right, and the CMAs. So it was almost a year ago, and for her to try to stretch it out just did, didn't really seem feasible to me. Yeah, that's true. Well, one question that just came to mind for me is then, couldn't they have had her do one of those just like collaboration performances with somebody else? Because that still would have been good. Because she was the only Entertainer of the Year nominee who didn't perform. That's a really good point. I would have rather seen Taylor do a performance with Dirks than Cheryl Crow. Mm -hmm. who somehow got nominated for Female Vocalist of the Year, which I don't understand. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. They could have made it work out somehow. And I don't know whether that was her choice or their choice. I wonder if maybe she just didn't want to like put in the time for planning and rehearsal because she's so busy working on the album. Yeah, that's fair. I could see that. I would hope so. I mean, in terms of like all the award shows, this one... It's big, but it's not, I don't think, the biggest priority to her. Yeah, that's true. No, a lot of people were expressing their frustration with how many award shows there are these days. You know, especially with a country music format, you have the CMAs, the American Country Awards, the ACMs, the CMT Music Awards. It's just mm -hmm. um, so many different award shows. That's true, yeah. Yeah, it kind of takes away from the other, yeah, one award show just takes away from the other, yeah. Yeah, and honestly, between the ACMs and the CMAs, like, there's really no difference. Mm -hmm. The only difference I can think of is that at the ACMs, people are more casually dressed. Yeah. Yeah, I think the CMAs are definitely, a, in my mind, it's more prestigious to get a CMA than an ACM. To me, in country music, the CMA is like the award you would want to get. Right, right. So I don't think Taylor was probably too upset. One, because, as we said, George Strait clearly deserved it. And two, because she did get the amazing Pinnacle Award at the CMAs. 
Mm-hmm. Right. But one interesting thing that they announced on the show last night was that next year, which is going to be the 50th anniversary of the award show, they're going to be having it not in Vegas, but they're moving it to Dallas to have it at Cowboy Stadium. Right. And I think tickets go on sale next week. Are you serious? Wow. It's so early. I think they said April 15th. Great. So we'll never get tickets. (laughs) <laughs> it seemed like the lowest price was like one forty five. Ooh. Um, and then of course they have the more VIP perks that were I think in the three hundred dollar range. That just seems like such a ridiculously huge place to have an award show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's gonna be insane. What what's the capacity? Isn't it like eighty thousand people? Google says eighty thousand. One thing I don't like about the ACMs is how they switch venues. That's always bothered me. When they, they're at one venue and then they go to the other one. I don't know why. It just bothers me. Um, so hopefully they won't do that anymore. One other thing, though, to mention about the ACMs. Um, some people were, I think, a little concerned because when Miranda won Female Vocalist of the Year, she mentioned every single other female in the category except for Taylor. And I think people were a little bit concerned about that. Uh, but she explained after the award show that she... Um, just forgot about Taylor and she talked with Taylor and they're completely cool. She was more worried about like giving a shout out to one of her friends and just somehow forgot about Taylor, which as Swifty is like, we don't get that. We don't understand how that can happen, but how could you forget about Taylor? (laughs) It seems like all is well. So there's no big story there. Yeah. I mean, Miranda has made a point to thank Taylor in a lot of her recent awards speeches and I don't remember when was ever the first time I heard her do that, but the first time I heard her thank Taylor, I kind of thought that it was like not sincere because it just seemed like, I don't know, but I mean, over the years, she's like done it pretty consistently. So I think she really does respect her. Yeah. And before the show, they were hanging out, getting pictures together. Uh, So I think the respect is mutual. I don't know if I can say the same about Miranda's husband and Taylor. (laughs) I don't know. Blake Blake has said a few times. He did defend her, I remember, the one time. Yeah. He did say on The Voice that country music will always claim Taylor. That's true. I guess I just... He, like, he's made her the butt of so many of his jokes. Yeah, you know. Right. <laughs> well, if you think back to last year's AC... Or no, 2012's ACMs, he was making fun of her surprised face. Right, yeah, yeah. I think that... And I remember that kind of kicked off a lot of... A lot of uh, news, I guess, about Taylor. A lot of uh, that drama that happened. So, I think my favorite moment of the show last night from Blake and Luke as hosts is when they came out on stage pretending to be Daft Punk. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. See, I think that's their angle. I think they they never really, you know, they never really intend to, you know, make fun of anyone. They're just they're just playfully kind of poking, you know. I think that's what Blake does to Taylor most of the time. They were like, and here's Daft Punk to present the next award. I was like, <laughs> what? They don't speak. And then it was Blake and Luke. <laughs> yeah, I was, I fell for it. Yeah, I did too. I thought it was actually them. Yeah, I said out loud, this has to be a joke. Please <laughs> tell me this is a joke. I was like, they can't present an award. They don't speak. Yeah, that was good. The other thing that they did I th- that I thought was funny was the selfie trying oh, to be yeah. all like Ellen. No, I mean, I think they were good hosts. Um, I wouldn't mind if they host again next year. No, yeah, neither would I. Yeah. Do you guys have anything else about the ACMs? Only that I'll be surprised if Taylor shows up next year. Honestly, yeah. It's so sad to say that, though. I, really, I wasn't yeah. sure she would show up this year. But, we'll, I mean, if, if this next album goes kind of the same way as Red, and maybe even more of a departure, definitely mm-hmm. it's a possibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to even be nominated, yeah. I think uh, the more she moves towards pop, I think the less... Uh, I think the less... Uh, the Country Academy, I guess, is going to want to nominate her, or you're you know, even give her awards, I guess, so. Although one thing, I do think the country music industry doesn't want to get away from Taylor because she brings so much money to Nashville. Definitely. And these award shows get ratings a lot just because of her. You know, Mm -hmm. they 
if you noticed last night before every commercial break, they would say Taylor is coming up. And then oh, absolutely. like what, an hour and a half later she shows up. <laughs> um, and, and I think they recognize that she brings in the money and ratings, but then they, it's frustrating because then they just don't really recognize her. Right. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. So anyway, we'd love to hear uh, your guys' thoughts and opinions about uh, anything that either we talked about or, you know, something that maybe we didn't discuss uh, about the ACM. So, yeah, we'd love to hear them, you know, uh, tweet tweet us, email us, Facebook us, you know, whatever. So we'd love to hear what you guys think. So now a reminder about our giveaway. Uh, we have one that's been going on for a few weeks, and by the time that you hear this episode, there will probably be about two or three days left to enter it. Um, it's going to go either until April 13th or if we reach um, 4,000 followers before then, then we'll close it. But it looks like it probably will go to the 13th. So you should definitely enter. You can enter as many times as you want. It's all on our Twitter at SwiftCast13. And the prize pack includes um, an 8x10 photo of Taylor, a Taylor red beach towel, a red tour lanyard, and a rare envelope uh, that Taylor sent out during the Speak Now era for award season. So it's really cool. And if you go on our Twitter page, you'll see where we've tweeted the giveaway graphic. So then all you need to do is tweet that graphic with the caption, and the instructions are all on the graphic itself. So definitely enter. It's open worldwide to everyone, and you can enter as many times as you want. So get those in for the last few days, and we're going to pick a winner at random, and then we will contact them via Twitter. All right, and just some reminders for you guys. Um, uh, don't forget to press the subscribe button on iTunes. Um, what that'll do is it'll um, automatically download our latest episode for you um, so that you don't have to go back into iTunes and do it every week. So uh, make sure you do that for us. It helps us out. Um, maybe leave leave a rating or something like that. Um, anything, you know, that really helps us out. So um, you can also contact us uh, if you'd like to about anything throughout the show. Uh, whether you want to submit for mini segments or whether uh, you have an opinion or thought or something you'd like to share, a story maybe, um, you can contact us several ways. Um, you can do it through um, our Twitter, at um, SwiftCast13. Uh, you can do it through our Gmail, the SwiftCast13 at gmail.com. You can do it on Facebook, facebook.com slash the SwiftCast. You can do it through our website, SwiftCast13.com, or you can find us on Taylor Connect. Uh, our username is SwiftCast13. All right, so uh, as we kind of close up our episode here, uh, so what do you guys think Taylor will be doing um, next week, within the next week? Oh, I have a good one. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that she's going to go to Saturday Night Live this weekend to support Ed. Mine was also Ed-themed. Yeah, I think that's very likely. I was going to say that she's just going to keep listening to sing over and over and over and over and over. I was going to say she's going to tweet a video of her jamming out to sing. Ooh, that would be good. I wonder if Meredith likes it. Meredith doesn't concern herself with such things. <laughs> <laughs> I really wonder if Meredith and Graham have ever met. I mean, I'm guessing they don't go overseas, so maybe not. Mm, it's going to happen eventually. They'll make it happen, Taylor and Ed. I know it'll happen. Can you imagine how viral those photos would go? Oh, man. <laughs> that would be incredible. Well, Ed has a place in Nashville, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he could do it. It could happen. Oh. Well, if that happens, you know we'll be talking about it on next week's episode. I hope it happens. <laughs> All right, guys. So for episode 47, uh, this has been Nate. Ashley. And Steph. All right. See you next week, guys. See you. Bye. Peace out, Swift Scouts. Thank you for listening to this episode of SwiftCast. Visit us on the web at theswiftcast.com. The theme song for SwiftCast was written and performed by Sydney and Chuck. SwiftCast is not directly affiliated with Taylor Swift, Big Machine Label Group, or 13 Management.